Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbadge.com, out here with my loadout from the 2022 Tactical Games down in Phoenix, Arizona. I guess we'll start here with this case. This is the double rifle case by Impact Case and Container. They're actually local to me up here. Solid case, I've reviewed it before. It's pretty handy. It's a little bigger than I like as far as lengthwise, but it has wheels so you can roll it around and it's big enough and this foam will pretty much conform to anything. So in here, I actually had my long gun, pistol, suppressor, things that basically did not want to get stolen out of my luggage, all locked up. And I actually had my plate carrier in here too. So all said, this thing was like just shy of like 50 pounds and it was all locked up. So pretty secure. I did not take it around at the games. It pretty much stayed in my vehicle because the wheels, they were all pretty good on concrete, not so much on dirt and rocks, but secure way to carry everything back and forth. I've also brought and reviewed this right here, which is my CC12 by Prometheus Design Works, cargo container 12. Basically it takes a plastic 12 gallon tote and then yeah, essentially ruggedizes it. I will say, since I flew with ammo, I want to say 250 pistol, 250 rifle, and camera gear, like two tripods, all kinds of stuff. This was definitely close to 50 pounds also. Not super fun with just the shoulder strap that's there, and there's no wheels, so it is what it is. We'll get into, yeah, I guess, kind of mundane clothes stuff like that. I ended up wearing these right here, which are my Primal Zen. Just got them. I think they're one of the newer shoes as of filming this by Limbs. And they're awesome. Super lightweight. They're flexible. Probably, well, they are definitely a little more stout than the Primal 2s, which are probably one of my favorites. But these did a great job. There was no point where I'm like, oh man, like I wish I was wearing heavier boots, like on a mile and a half run out through the desert when it was 100 degrees. These, again, they did a good job for me. There was no point either where I'm like, oh, I don't have enough traction for dragging the sled, even though I ate it straight out of the gate. These across the board just did a good job for me and I'm definitely glad they weren't any heavier or warmer because again, it was really hot down there. So yeah, those did good. As far as pants, these right here. These are by Prometheus Design Works. I believe they're their Odyssey cargo pant and I forget the name of this material. It's basically like a ripstop kind of nylon. And I chose these specifically, one, Honestly, most pants I wear are Prometheus Design Works. Most of them are their Raider Cut, which is probably my favorite. But these, they're, I want to say Odyssey, are cargo pants. So they have cargo pockets. I wasn't sure how much the tactical games had changed. At one point, you basically had to police all your magazines, like during the stage and stuff like that, which really sucked when one time I was shooting a single stack 1911, so I had like 10 magazines, like just thrown in cargo pockets. But with that in mind, I was like, I want a provision for carrying them. And at the same time, I knew, which we'll get to more in kind of like the rest of the loadout, I wasn't planning on having like placard and big battle belt and all of these things with like tons of magazines. Like I'd rather just carry them in my pockets. You don't really want superfluous stuff when you're picking up or climbing over or anything for that matter. So these actually did a good job. The way their pockets are set up, like the ones I'm wearing, you have deep front pockets on either side. And then in front of those are these pockets, which are sized perfectly for a cell phone or maybe a magazine. And then back pockets, not a fan of. They're zippered. I'd rather just have them slash pockets, but they're zippered. And then, yeah, cargo pockets, if I needed to shove stuff in there. And on top of that, just the material, it's rugged, and these are nice and lightweight, which was good because it was stupid hot. And then this sweet t-shirt, which oddly enough ended up getting pretty dirty and salty, 
my black rainbow shirt. It's one of my favorites. There's a link down below on Teespring. Actually, all this stuff will be linked to. And then, well, belt. So, again, I was not going the big overt war belt route because, in part, like I knew what this largely entailed, and that didn't do anything for me. Like, I don't need a Cobra buckle. I don't need provision for med kit, like all these other things. I did actually, down there, carry my tourniquet I usually carry, RMT, had that in there. But everything else with respect to pants, like everything out of the pockets, nothing I don't need. But for the belt, I ended up using this, which is the Agonic from Liv Agonic, I think. And honestly, it's made and set up for appendix, which I was not shooting, I was shooting other strong side outside the waistband and so this piece of material basically just slid all the way around so there was one rigid piece for me to mount my holster on over here and then the rest of it like there's flex to it which when you're carrying heavy things or breathing heavy is nice to have also notice that buckle this basically slides in here like this and so, I, again, like I didn't have a bunch of crap sticking off me or weighting me down, or for that matter, just some rigid scuba webbing for the sake of having rigid scuba webbing. So, yeah, helped me breathe, helped me move. Which I guess segues us into pistol, holster, ammo management. So, pistol, we're shooting this guy right here, which is the Walther PDP. On it, I have the Holosun 507C, I think, with the ACSS reticle. So a green chevron and then I think like a 60, 65 MOA circle. So when you present, if it's not perfect, you'll see some part of that circle and you can get back on target, which has actually been really handy as I've been on my other strong side journey, shooting left-handed, even though I'm right-handed. And yeah, this did a good job for me. Did I miss? a lot was it the pistol no it wasn't it was definitely me and yeah can't blame that pistol at all as far as ammo goes we're shooting this right here fioki 124 grain actually like last minute basically someone was supposed to send ammo which would have been awesome it didn't arrive so last minute i went to my friends over at east county guns i was like hey this is happening and I was able to get 250 rounds to be able to go out and go compete with, which was a good thing. Holster-wise, this right here, which is by Carry Concealment, it's a paddle holster. You're like, why not just put it on your belt? Well, a couple of reasons. One, time in between vents is like two or three hours, so don't really need or want to carry around a pistol usually. So I would just put it on my belt, and it was actually really, really secure when it latched on here, this piece of material back there, did not move around. And then in between events, didn't want to carry it, pull this thing out, lift it over the belt, and yeah, ground it. So I didn't have to just carry around a pistol that was unloaded because it was a cold range for the facility. I will say this did an awesome job for me, this holster, but it bit me a little bit in the beginning but it was a software problem, not a hardware problem. So originally telling them, hey, listen, this is what I'm going to do, made this holster with this cam piece right here. So if you cam it up, uh, really hard to get that gun out of the holster versus when it's cammed down, pretty easy, fairly light retention. So I would have this thing and I would cam it up go run the event, like pick up 125 pound sandbag, like whatever it is, some sort of dynamic movement where I did not want this to come out. Funny story, definitely watched a gun fly out, but it wasn't my gun. And so I would have this thing cammed up, I would go down and then I would take that off, draw this thing out. Ivan, that doesn't seem super efficient. By the time you get to the firing line, it's not, that's not a thing. By the time you get to the fire line, you're like staggering or trotting up to it, going, <gasps> trying to slow your breathing down. 
So how quick this comes out of the holster, not really a thing. I will say though, well, I did say it bit me in that I'd be like, oh wait, it's cammed. And so I'd shove that down. It took me about, cause remember I got this, I don't know, like day, two days before I flew out for the competition, shot with it like once. So there was a learning curve. So by the end of day two of the competition, eh, I was pretty solid with it, came quick and easy, but it actually did a really good job for me. And I was grateful to have that feature on here. Just, yeah, didn't want to be that person that lost their gun. So magazines had, well, a total of five, because sometimes the stages would require five magazines. And as far as mag pouches, again, I don't want crap that's going to be in the way or be heavy. So I ended up with these right here, which are from Blue Force Gear. Had two of them and they just Velcro on. And when there's no mag in there, one, they're super lightweight, like they're Helium Whisper or whatever. And then on top of that, they just collapse down to nothing. So it's nothing rigid that if I'm trying to lift something or roll it up my body like a sandbag that I can barely lift, it's not getting caught, hung up on anything like that. These, ironically, are actually made for I think MP7, which I was not shooting. And so what's nice about them though is one, they'll obviously fit pretty much any magazine, especially double stack, and you can shove them down in there deep. So rather than like, hey, I need really quick access to my magazine, so it's only gonna go this high, which again, opportunity for this to get caught, pulled out, definitely happened to people, lost magazines, they're looking for it. It's like 20 yards behind them, did not run into that. And then once this comes out, it goes flat, done. So I had two of those actually on my belt. Those I left there all day because whatever, I would take my pistol on and off. And then in basically my two pockets, one of which being on the pants, basically that front pocket where I was saying like cell phone and then the other one like hand pocket, use these guys right here, which are the Neo Mag. So this sits down in your pocket magazine comes down in there and it's secure so you reach in pull that thing out conduct your reload again once the magazine's out well one there's no snag hazard when the magazine's in because they're sitting inside your pocket two you know exactly where they are in your pocket like easy to index and yeah once the magazine's out your pocket just lays flat and it's good to go they did a really good job for me I actually liked using these in this competition. Are they as quick as some sort of like exposed battle belt mag pouch? They are not, not for me anyway. Doesn't matter. Again, not for me. Like the competition doesn't come down to how quick that mag change was. Again, trotting up to the firing line, trying to catch your breath, reaching in your pocket, pulling a mag out. Not a big deal at all. Did good. Again, I said five magazines. What about that fifth one? Back pocket. Stayed there until that first firing string and then the rest of them basically drew from belt or pocket. How about PPE? Personal protective equipment. Eyes and ears, stuff like that. Well, I wear prescription lenses and so I continue to wear these right here, which are the Smith Director Elite. Really, I just wear them because the frames are comfortable, like they fit me, and they're still my prescription. I really need to replace them. These lenses are just so pitted, they're terrible. All scratched up, and yeah. I feel like I'm looking through, I don't know, like fogged lenses when I put those things on. But it's what I had. I need to get some new ones. I just haven't yet, so shot with those. And I'm pretty sure that I don't have my ear pro in here. Pretty sure it's on my carry-on. I flew in yesterday, haven't even really unpacked anything. But I was using the noise, noise barrier, noise fighters, noise barrier, I believe, noise barrier micro from Auto Engineering. They're basically amplified hearing protection that are in ear. 
and they're awesome. I ended up, they come with two different tips. One is kind of like a, I don't know, like silicone tip, and the other one's like a foam tip. Foam tip's comfortable for me, the other one definitely was not. And I ended up upgrading those foam tips to some other ones by, I think it's Comply Foam. There'll be a link down below. But did a great job for me. Again, they're amplified so you can hear range commands, things like that, which is pretty important. But at the same time, they cut off when loud noises, so people shooting. And the biggest thing for me is they were in your hearing protection. I knew one, I've done tactical games before, usually some work involved usually end up sweating. With that, I knew it was going to be really hot down in Arizona, and the last thing I want is over your hearing protection that you're just sweating into like gel cups because it's gross. So in your hearing protection, also there were a number of things where you're throwing something up on your shoulder, and yeah, people are getting ear pro pushed off or just straight knocked out. Did not run into that with these in your hearing protection and at the same time able to hear commands which is pretty important as far as i guess continuing the ppe theme plate carrier i was running this right here which is the plate carrier i think it's the lvt ovt something like lvz low vis or overt plate carrier by ot Audi o-t-t-e gear and it has many of the same features of most plate carriers because those features tend to do pretty good one of which is an elastic cummerbund that actually has provision for like ar magazines and so again i said sometimes you'd be running like something with or a stage rather with like five magazines so i would load these up two on one side two on the other and then that fifth one would just stay in my pocket for the beginning of the stage and it did a really good job for me i will say and it's probably more a matter of i don't know maybe it's me maybe it's how this stitched there was definitely kind of a hot spot probably should have rolled these shoulder pads over a little more so it was just like velcro on my neck but it did a pretty good job and i was able to do a pretty decent job adjusting these i think something where a lot of manufacturers kind of screw up on plate carriers is not enough adjustment to wear them right so granted ah, get away from me granted competition it doesn't really matter if your plate carrier is where it should be ballistically because ideally you want the top of this plate basically up here at that notch right there so we're covering most of our vitals and then same thing high in the back there were a lot of people like plate carriers like down here front and back i don't think that really helps i want to keep the weight higher so basically enough adjustment here in the straps to be able to do that to where it would ride pretty comfortably and the fact that it's elastic so when you start breathing really hard and heavy actually moves with you some and then also you can adjust it on the fly so if you're going to be sprinting probably want this tighter but then if you're going to turn around and go for like a mile and a half run like maybe you want to loosen it up a little bit so yeah i was actually pretty pleased with this and then inside here heavy by today's standards the chase tactical level four standalone plates that are like i think seven plus pounds or something like that somewhere around seven pounds a piece but yeah did a good job and lastly my long gun for the competition which is this guy right here it is the blackout defense dual taper lock i forget the exact nomenclature but big picture uses their dual taper lock for the barrel mounting system essentially making it really really rigid kind of lock up there which enhances accuracy and yeah center, center. this rifle did a pretty good job for me i missed a lot I'm pretty sure it was not the rifle for the sling on here i have the sierra attack sling through i 
believe it's made by Spirit of Systems. And then had to have backup iron sights per tactical games, had the Inbus, never used them. Ended up shooting with this right here, which is the Aimpoint Micro T2 on a Scaleworks Leap Mount. Not a really high one, pretty sure it's lower one third co witness. And yeah, just a red dot. And then the Rev collaboration, Stoner Rifle Grip, as well as this prototype. Again, collaboration with them, Ford Vertical Grip ish hand stop. And then what else? Oh, yeah. So at the games, very specific rules with respect to flash hiders. I wasn't really sure if this one kind of fell into that window, so needed a can. Ended up using this right here, which is my Liberty Mystic X. And bam, here's my rifle. Again, this did a good job for me. I will say there were one or two times that I guess we'll hold it like this because I was shooting on the strong side. One or two times I would put the magazine in and then run the bolt and it would it would basically get stuck right here with like a round on the feed ramp. And that was not the time or place to diagnose that. I think it was magazine related because it would randomly happen and like I was randomly running five different magazines. And so yeah, it happened a couple times. Again, I think it was probably magazine related, but didn't have the time or opportunity to kind of diagnose that. But how did this do for me, kind of across the board, running this? And I say running this, this red dot, because at one point someone asked me like, why are you running that red dot? And I was like, why am I running that red dot? Well, when I left the tactical games at the end of 2019, you could only run one X. So a red dot, or I usually ended up shooting like primary arm Cyclops, which etched reticle, easy on the eyes for stigmatism. And again, one X. So yeah, I was like, I guess I'll just run a red dot. And there's more thought that probably went into it than that. Like one, I wasn't really sure how far we were shooting. And depending on the type of shooting, well, under stress, high heart rate. A red dot, honestly, generally across the board, way easier to shoot. Or for that matter, 1x if you have a low power variable. And I watched this play out across the entire two days, people with low power variables. Invariably, they would have them on like eight power or six power, like the top end and they would throw that thing up there and they would be trying to find it because they're fighting and they have scope shadow and they still haven't adjusted their stock. So it's like this. And then they're trying to find their target because we were shooting some targets that were like 50 yards away. So at 8X, they all look, all look pretty similar. Make sure you don't shoot on someone else's target. And so that would bite people. And then the other piece to it too is when I look through, sorry, continuing the other strong side journey. When I look through here, trying to get what I can get, I'm breathing heavy, my dot's going like this. And I know that probably no amount of deep breaths is really going to slow that down, rifle or pistol. So a number of them, I'm like, hmm, it's probably about as good as I'm going to get. Like, let's send it now. Because, like, that was my wobble zone, like watching that. At 50 yards, at 8X, you're, you're seeing this, which is pretty disconcerting, especially when every miss is like a 10 second penalty. And again, people still kept it there. Would have it been advantageous at some point to have magnification? Probably, really, for the reason of being able to crank it up for a minute and be like, oh, like most of my rounds are over to the right probably because of three amigos going on when I was shooting. But with armed with that knowledge, I'd be like, I'm gonna just go ahead and favor left because I know I'm pushing stuff over to the right. Is that the solution? In a bind it is. Kentucky windage because of a known condition, which is super high heart rate. Really, you should just hold dead center and solid press. That was not happening though. Um, as far as the zero I ran on this, 
pretty much like 5200 largely confirmed at 200 so at 50 it was i don't know maybe a half inch low did i math all that stuff out no like a lot of the ranges we were shooting were like around 50 yards or so rifle i think there was a steel one like close to 100 heard some people talking like okay hey my zeros that i'm like no hold dead center like Cross the board, hold that center, and if you have a good press, you're fine. Like, we're talking about very small deviation, which is well within the confines of the targets we were shooting. So, yeah, slow press. Of course, I say that I shanked a bunch of rounds. But cross the board, this did a good job for me. It is long. Does that matter? Not really. Honestly, most of the stuff we did did not involve spending a bunch of time, like, carrying running with this thing i will say there was a mile and a half like long run i say long it's long when you only run 400 meters at a time but that mile and a half run we had to run obviously all of our gear to include our rifle and we just got done shooting our rifle yes i'm shooting a can no i don't run suppressor covers on it spatial awareness is more important than a suppressor cover because honestly you still burn stuff with suppressor cover but I did not have one on there. We just finished shooting our rifle, so I spent about a mile and a half just carrying this thing. It was fine, it wasn't a big deal. I could have slung it and just put pressure on it so it did not come near me. Honestly, it was easier just holding my hand and run with. Something else of note, this is clear anodized and then like, I guess bronze anodized and it was way nicer than a black gun. If you are, I don't know, if you ever spend time overseas where it's really hot, or for that matter, shooting stateside where it's really hot, and you leave your gun out in the sun, which you definitely end up doing on stages at the tactical games, it will get really hot. And yeah, not a fan of black guns, just kind of across the board, kind of vanilla, kind of boring. But on top of that, like there's definitely utility in having a gun that is a lighter color, whether you rattle can it, something along those lines. So you don't just burn yourself when you end up picking it up, which is a thing. So kind of overall across the board, how did all of this stuff do for me? Honestly, it did good. I don't think there was necessarily anything I would have changed about the setup. I mean, it did good. Was I expecting it to do bad? No. Had I used all of these things? Like, largely no. Usually the first time I go out there, like maybe I'll go shoot something on the range a couple times, put it on, make sure it's sized right, but cool, like let's do it live, whatever. In part, cause I don't care. Like I'm in the business of reviewing things, not like winning, I'm not sponsored to go shoot and win events or anything like that. So yeah. I get to go out and have fun and just see how stuff does for me. This, as I mentioned, did good. Pistol did good. I didn't do that good. Definitely dropped a bunch of shots. The, the whole setup I had with respect to belt and holster, all that stuff did great for me to include just the way I carried magazines. And I watched plenty of people like, heck yeah, man, six mags across the front, like rigid mag holders too. And it's like, that's pretty fun until you pick up that 125 pound sandbag, 125 pound. And with that, do you want to be holding something like how many inches in front of yourself do you want to move a large mass away from your center of gravity? Like, hmm, hard pass, slick front. And this definitely allowed that. So I didn't have anything sticking out or at one point basically cleaning bars and one of the guys I was really fortunate, super good group of guys that I ended up competing with. And one of the guys was like, oh man, like, yeah, that makes sense. And then later in the day, he's like, yeah, that really makes sense having this slick. And we were basically cleaning up this like axle bar and had to get it up overhead. So basically clean and jerk. And he'd bring this thing up and he would smack like stuff that was sticking out in front of his plate carrier and like drive his carrier into him. Which, yeah, like, it's a thing. It happens because you have stuff sticking out in front of you. And I mean, to that end too, just, it's a game. Treat it as such. Do you need a D-ball on here? Probably not. 
Do you need a light so that you can try and push this into a barricade and not get it in? Hmm, probably not. Like, I get it, tactical's in the name, but game's in the ga name also, so like, kind of favor the game side of it. As I mentioned, there will be links to all of these things down below. You can go check them out. And last but not least, if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it. Whether it's liking and sharing videos or going over to kitbadger.com, stickers, patches, things like that, or supporting me directly through Patreon. And if you have questions for me, happy to answer them over on Patreon where we have an active Discord. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.